we're here in San Jose at the Fabulous Improv Comedy Theater about to interview the one, the only, the multi-talented Guy Toy. How you doing? What's going on, man? Everything all right with yeah, you? Yeah, everything always good. Man. Coming up here from LA? Yeah, man, back on the road. I took a, a, you know, about a month and a half off, man. And, uh, you know, just all the traveling, but I'm, I'm back on the road. I started last weekend at the wonderful DC Improv. Mm -hmm. And uh, this weekend at the uh, wonderful San Jose Improv. I saw your last tweet where you shout out to DC. So oh, you, yeah, man. You actually tweet. I tweet. I tweet. I do everything myself. Man, all social media, I do it myself, man. Because it's as unfiltered as I am and my thoughts, man, I, I, I feel like I, I need to give to people what I what I'm feeling at the time, no matter how I'm feeling. So yeah, I do my own social media. Okay. So where are you originally from? But I claim St. Louis, because St. Louis is where I you know, spent most of my time. I, I think those were the most important years of my life. That's where they did most of my schooling and, and, and really growing up. So, uh, you know, St. Louis, but you know, been in LA for the last 20 years. So. And so from St. Louis to LA, you moved to LA wow. to pursue your marketing degree right. to live with your two older brothers. Tell us what happened that got you where you at right now. When I moved out here, they weren't living together, but uh, my brother's already married, my other older brother's already married. So I moved in with Joe to kind of get my, you know, see what was going on. I really didn't move out here to get into the entertainment industry. But, you know, I got bit a little bit before I got out here by Def Comedy Jam. Mm -hmm. You know, Def Comedy Jam, when it burst on the scene in the early 90s, I saw people in my peer group who were funny. Plus, my brother, you know, he started Sydney. hosting after Martin Lawrence, right? Right. He started comedy way before I did. Man, he was on the first season, first few seasons of Def Jam. I think maybe every season of Def Jam up until you know he stopped hosting. And when I moved out to LA, you know, it, I, I tried. I tried my hand at stand up, man. I went on stage and uh, you, very smart move. You are phone. hilarious. When you're on stage, you kill it, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm dying laughing. That. I'm working my abs out just laughing. Yeah, man. man. That's what it is, man. It's an ab workout. The guy to the comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, what a lot of people don't know is you were the original host of the original Kings of Comedy. Tell us a little bit about that. I was still young in the game. I was really, I call myself the prince of the Kings of Comedy show. So those guys were kings. It was myself, Cedric, um, Bernie Mac, and Steve Harvey. And I had been in the game maybe seven years at, the, at that point. And it was, it was just a great experience, man. I mean, to learn from those guys uh, and to tour to see where comedy could go. I mean, we were doing arenas, right. like sold out arenas, man. And I learned so much from those guys, man. And, and uh, it made me want to get into the club scene and, and, and build my act like theirs, right. you know? Comedy clubs are very important, but people don't realize these are the gyms. This is where we, this is where the comics go and 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 and, and grind out that material to get right. it to take it to that level, to right. take it to the to the, the television or the movie theaters. And, and it's interesting you say that the comedy clubs are, are where you work out your, yeah. your routine because I seen, a, I seen a recent interview with Eddie Murphy and yeah. they asked him if he was going to do another Raw or Delirious uh -huh. um, since Kevin Hart is, is blowing it up right now. Yeah, Kevin, uh, Kevin, is, Kevin is doing real well. So he he said the same thing. He said. He would go back to the comedy clubs as big a star he is. He would go back you to the comedy clubs before he would. It's funny. I asked Eddie Murphy that same question when we were shooting the movie Life, mm -hmm. and he was telling us a story about Raw. And we, you know, back then this is like '98. We we're asking him if he would he go back and do stand up. And at that point, I mean, he was basically like, you know, for what? For what? But then as he lived longer and experienced more things and, and newer things. You know, once you're a stand-up, you're always a stand-up. Right. And, and I know he got that itch again, but Eddie is smart enough to know uh, that he just can't go in, into an arena or a theater and just pick up where he left off because right. he, set the, he set the bar high for himself. Right. It's gonna take grind, and because he's Eddie Murphy, which is on, you know, probably everybody's comedy Mount Rushmore. Yeah, he knows he, knows he had to get, do that grind again. And can he do that grind? It's a grind. And being in a comedy club every night, I mean, the schedule is grueling. Right. I mean, and my normal schedule is, you know, six shows in a weekend, six shows in four days. And not to mention the grind on, on the aspect of balancing your family life, but you don't just do stand-up. You've been in television shows, you've been on Martin, you talked about being on the movies with, with Life, um, Eddie Murphy, yeah. Martin Lawrence, and uh, well, Bernie Mac. I mean, you know, so what do you have next in, the, in, in plan with all of that? <laughs> I chose this life, so it means I, I gotta go hard. and I gotta, I gotta get to where I know where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no excuses. But a lot of things are going on right now, man. I just recently um, acquired a comedy club. 
myself and Kim Coles, the original owner, uh, Inns Mitchell in LA, called the Common Union. He's been there for a while, but you know he needed some help. And he was gonna close his doors because it's just that's a lot to take on. So I couldn't see this comic club closing because uh, young black comedians need every spot they can to try and hone their craft. You know we're in LA. LA is you know flooded with you know great comedy clubs from the Improv to the Comedy Store to the Laugh Factory to uh, the Hog Cafe, another one just opened up, Inside Jokes. I didn't come up through this, this the Comedy Union, but I came up through clubs like the Comedy Union that were black owned, and I know how important it was to my career, so it's like, okay, uh, these young cats need a cat, and also veterans need a, cat, need a place to come back home and home their craft, like where we do a lot of stuff in the community, charity, but also do big showcases, you know, for up and coming comedians, and you know, our slogan is, uh, we're so not Hollywood. <laughs> That's my biggest thing right now, but um, shooting a documentary as well on stand-up. And uh, I did a night called Fat Tuesdays at the Comedy Store in LA, P-H-A-T, Fat Tuesdays. Is that is that circled around you or comedy? No, it, it's definitely not around me. It's about this comedy night that was one of the biggest comedy nights in the history of just comedy, period. Not just black comedy, but comedy, period. And, and a lot of, a lot of um, stars that you see today came through this comedy night or and some careers launched right there my the success of my career you know american issue x is a movie that i did because they saw me at that comedy night uh you know nick cannon uh was discovered at that comedy night you know chris sucker was uh booked for fifth element because of that comedy night and so many other careers was launched because they were seen right there at the comedy store at fat tuesday so uh, it's a lot of stories. Cat Williams uh, used to come through all the time. Eddie Murphy used to be a regular there in the audience. It's gonna be a it's gonna be an epic uh, documentary, man. I'm really proud of. It. Can't wait. So television. What yeah. you got in the works with television? Currently on uh, ABC Family's Dancing Fool, which is uh, a show, a viral video show of, of people across America and the world who upload their videos on the internet, and we show them, talk about them, and then we have. Uh, we invite two of the contestants to come on the show and have a dance off for ten thousand dollars, and then we all also induct someone into the Hall of Fools, which is someone who video went viral and got a bunch of hits, and we put them in the Hall of Fools. And it's a great show. Melissa Peterman is the host. I'm the DJ. She's a very talented young lady from Reba and Baby Daddy. So uh, it's a it's a different show for me because it's so not my audience. Uh, <laughs> Gotta branch out. Bro. They're 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 a nice wholesome audience, whereas. My comedy is strictly unfiltered. I really just don't give a, <laughs> you know what? But um, about what comes out of my mouth, I kind of go against the grain. Maybe that's why they beat you, because you keep it real. Well, I'm keeping it real vanilla on the show. <laughs> it should be, because it's a family network. Right. You know, right. so yeah, the, the, my jokes make you go out and have families. So have you ever read any negative reviews? about one of your shows or anything oh, absolutely. you've done. How, how did you handle that? What? Critics are there to criticize and to write, and, mm -hmm. and it's their opinion. You mm -hmm. can't get mad at them for that. Right. You know, they don't know the whole story, but they have to write and go off what they do know. It has to be something that, that, that's going to get your attention. Right. I stand up. I make a lot of bold, St messed up statements, <laughs> and I do it because to get people's attention. The thing about it is I tell people all the time, uh, when they get into the entertainment industry and they have what we call now haters, not necessarily haters, it's just because someone doesn't agree with you or doesn't like your style of you know, art or entertainment doesn't make them a hater. Right. But Jesus had haters and he was perfect. Oh, yeah. And he still he's got still, him to this still, day. Yeah, and that, that was some real good advice. So what other advice could you give to that stand-up comic watching um, that anybody in the entertainment business watching and striving to get to where you are and, and whoever their idols are. Get out, doing? don't do it. No. <laughs> For stand-up, of course, uh, first of all, be funny. Hopefully you're engaging. Find your voice. Find out who you are and, and, and develop that. But also read books. I still work, read books on stand-up comedy, man. This is my, one of my favorite books is by Franklin and Jai, very uh, talented comedian. Uh, who has a book called uh, Comic Insights. I tell every comic to get that. Jerry Seinfeld's comedian. But uh, you gotta sacrifice, you know? Like I said earlier, the comic clubs are the gym. You gotta forget your friends and, and, and forget chasing ass. Uh, fellas, you know, and women quit chasing. If you really wanna do it in entertainment, you gotta give all that up and, and, and really go hard. And you know, if you can, you know, if it's you, 
drink, smoke a lot of weed. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to take too I'm much joking. more of your time, and um, <laughs> you got to get ready for but the show drink. and knock right. out everybody in the audience. But if you want to learn more about Guy Tory, you can follow him on Twitter. Yep, Twitter at Guy Tory, G U Y T O R R Y, and it's the same for my Instagram, my my Pinterest, my uh, Facebook, all of it. So you know, and he also has a website www.guytorylive.com. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you very much, no man. No problem, man. Look forward to seeing your show later on tonight. Woo! All right. <laughs> Everyone, that's it. Buckle up.